Hello and welcome to the first live 3D printing webinar of 2020. I want to do a quick sound check. If you can hear us, uh, please chat in the type in the chat box below or uh, click that raise your hand button so you can actually hear us loud and clear. All right, Jordan, can you hear me? I hear you loud and clear, Amelia, and it looks like we're getting lots of comments that everyone can hear you. I see hands raise in, so uh, I think we are good to uh, go ahead and get started. First off, I just do want to thank everyone for their attendance today for the webinar. Uh, we'd much prefer to, to host this in person as one of our live events where you can uh, see and feel our 3D printed parts and see the printers in action. Uh, but for everyone's safety and due to the current circumstances, I think this is a pretty decent substitution. So, Amelia, hey, how, how have you been hanging in there with everything going on with COVID-19? You know, Jordan, I appreciate you asking. Um, it's been a very interesting um, couple of weeks. I'm going on week five now of being quarantined. And, uh, you know, I went to the grocery store the other day and my days are running together. I ended up going to the grocery store on a Sunday uh, before noon trying to get some essential items. So, I ended up just turning around and walking home because uh, those essential items were just not being sold at that hour. Oh, boy. How about yourself? How's it going over there? Yeah, I think uh, pretty much everyone I know can relate to some strange grocery store story and not being able to get what they need. Uh, for me, it was uh, right before they had announced in Georgia the uh, two-week mandatory self-isolation I went to the grocery store and stocked up on about 35 days of non-perishable items. Uh, but then yesterday I was like, oh no, I've got no Snickers bars and I'm out of almost out of oatmeal cream pie. So I had to go back to the grocery store just to get those. Uh, th those are my essential items. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. Too funny. Chocolate and alcohol. <laughs> so I, I know we've got several individuals on the 3D printing team tuning in to today's webinar to answer questions as we go. And uh, towards the end, we'll do a sort of official Q&A session and we can look at those questions asked along the way. Uh, but real quick, let's just go around the virtual room and introduce all of the 3D printing team that has joined us on the webinar today. So uh, again, my name is Jordan Swan. I'm based out of Atlanta, Georgia. I'm the Mark Forge 3D printing specialist for all of the Southeast territory for MLC CAD systems. I've been working with MLC for about a year now, and prior to joining the team at MLC, I was working in the medical device field. Uh, just a couple fun facts about me. I, I love to play the piano. I guess right now with everything going on, I've definitely had time to really brush up on my skills, and uh, I, I love cooking good food, and unfortunately I can't go out. I'm a little bit of a foodie. I love going out to great restaurants, but uh, due to the, the quarantine, that that's not really happening right now. Uh, I also want to do introduce us to Travis Bates. He is our Mark Forge technician. He's also joining us on the call today, uh, listening in and auditing the questions as they, those come in. Travis has been working with 3D printing for about five years. Uh, he's an avid golfer. Too bad he's not hitting the course right now. Uh, how about, Amelia, how about I let you just introduce yourself? Awesome. Thanks. Um, so my name is Amelia Parada. I'm located out of the Austin, Texas office and the Tempe, Arizona office. I've been with MLC CAD Systems for about five years now. I'm an avid weightlifter. I do like to go to the gym and pump some iron as well as um, I'm, I'm taking advantage of this quarantine and learning how to bake. So that's one of my key takeaways. Um, and then up in the Northwest, we've got China Penne. She is originally from Hawaii. She's a big family oriented individual. Um, so her family is everything to her. And uh, fun fact, she actually came from the uh, cam side of the business, the master cam side of the business. So um, her knowledge of the subtractive manufacturing is a plus to the additive manufacturing side of the business. So that's kind of cool. And then out of the Dallas-Fort Worth area, we've got Kyle Norman. He is born and bred out of Dallas-Fort Worth. Um, he's been there for a number of years. He's a mechanical engineer by trade. And um, he is fluent in Spanish. So um, he learned his Spanish working with his father in his landscaping business over a number of years. So that's kind of a cool uh, little tidbit about Kyle. Wow, I didn't know that about Kyle. So the 3D printing team is bilingual. Place your orders in English or Spanish, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, absolutely. 
So I, I guess that kind of wraps up the introductions. Kyle Norman is going to be handling the bulk of the webinar today. So without further ado, I'm going to uh, pass things over to Kyle. Kyle, take it away. Hey, everybody. And thanks again for uh, taking the time out of your schedule to attend our webinar. Uh, I'm Kyle Norman. I'm uh, the 3D printing application expert here out of Dallas. And uh, I'm going to cover this part of the presentation. If you guys have any questions throughout this presentation, feel, please feel free to uh, post those down in the questions. Um, and then at the end, we'll actually have a question and answer session to get any of those questions answered that uh, don't get answered during the presentation. So real quick, going to cover an agenda, uh, just a few things that we're going to cover. Uh, we've, we've already done some introductions here. So then we're going to cover, uh, the first thing I'm going to cover is going to be the 3D printing and manufacturing. Uh, then we're going to step over to the MarkForge platform and processes. And then we're really going to kind of do a deep dive into real customers who are finding real value uh, right now with the, the Mark Forge 3 printing technologies. They're seeing the benefits today. Um, then we're going to open it up for questions and answers, and uh, we'll go from there. So why are we all here? You know, we're here to learn something more about 3D printing and how it can reinvent manufacturing. But everyone's got a slightly different take on that, and we're going to explore just a few of those today. Ultimately, my goal here is twofold. It's to inform, educate, and inspire you with what can be done with the Mark Forge printers. And then ultimately, I want to start conversations. So I want you to leave this presentation, and I want you to go back to your company, and I want you to have... Uh, those conversations with the manufacturing guys, with the with the bosses, with the VPs, to say, hey, look, here's the here's the things that we can do with 3D printing. It really can add some value to us today. So 3D printing has broad impacts to manufacturing organizations, perhaps more than you're even aware of today. But much like the graphic you see here, you know, the vast majority of an iceberg is below the surface. So Today, we're really going to explore beyond the tip of the iceberg, and we're going to share a number of examples where customers are realizing major manufacturing efficiencies and transforming their businesses with the Mark Forge technology. So let's talk a little bit more about what I mean. Customers using additive manufacturing often see increased efficiency in several parts of their manufacturing operation. The things that they see are... Uh, th these three things, right? So improved process speed, often related to lightweighting benefits of additive manufacturing, uh, but not limited to. Uh, reduced downtime, so don't have uh, lead times to replace parts. So if a part goes down on the line, you have the ability to to manufacture that part right right on uh, on site, as opposed to having to order that part and await the standard lead time weeks, maybe even uh, days or even weeks. Um, greater yields. So you have the ability to improve the design of your, of your line to be more efficient through the use of additive manufacturing. We're going to talk a little bit more about that later on. The benefits go beyond manufacturing line efficiency and change the way our customers, you guys, do business. You know, with lower production costs, that can improve our ability to compete in the marketplace. And then machinist talent. It allows our machinist talent to focus on high value jobs. So we can free the machinists up from those tooling jobs and really kind of work on the bread and butter, those parts that actually make money. While well, we're 3D printing those jigs, tools, and fixtures that the machinists need to produce those high high value parts, um, then greater profit margins. Just I exactly what I was just saying. So if we have a machinist that can focus on those high value parts and not have to worry about the tooling aspect of that project, all, all of a sudden we're going to see greater pro profit margins because now our machinist is more efficient. Um, we can get to market faster by decreasing product development cycle times. 
you know, so ultimately being able to, in the product development process, being able to iterate quicker, get through your multiple iterations to arrive at that final design and hit market faster is, is better for everybody. Um, the next is increase, increase the agility of your manufacturing operations by changing over lines faster. So if you have jigs and fixtures that allow you to change from one product line to another faster uh, out there on, on the shop floor. So if you have a particular product line and you're going from product A to product B, it's all about reducing that downtime in between those products and continue to, make, to uh, be manufacturing faster. Um, and then reduce money spent on physical inventory by transitioning to a digital inventory. So we're beginning to see lots of customers transition over to this digital inventory model where all of the parts inside of their product that can be 3D printed, um, they keep just enough to, to react quickly, but then have the ability to print those in the background uh, as the market demands that product. I think each one of you here today can find a value in a minimum of one of these categories, if not many of these categories. What does this mean for manufacturing? Well, it means a lot of change. You know, from inventory management to reduced production costs, improved supply chain logistics, and accelerated product development, additive manufacturing is a competitive edge in today's market. So guys, don't just take my word for it. Let's look at um, Caldwell. So Caldwell is one of our customers and they're, they are reinventing manufacturing with the Mark Forge technology. Let's take two minutes and look at the most recent case study uh, with Caldwell Manufacturing and see how Mark Forge has impacted their business. At Caldwell, we make components that go into windows and doors that are sold around the world. We've used the Mark Forge printers to make everything from prototype all the way through low volume production pieces, tools, and fixtures to aid in manufacturing for assembly and or test and measurement. In the past, an engineer would need a part made and I'd have to estimate how long it would take to machine that part. Some of those parts could have 40 hours of machining in them. Today, with the Mark Forge printers, an engineer will give me a drawing and the first thing that comes to my mind is I want to use the printers. This fixture to machine traditionally would probably cost five times as much and take two weeks to manufacture. I printed it in a day and they were able to use it that same day. This is a production assembly. This is a prototype assembly using both composite and metal 3D printers. This assembly allows you to tilt your windows in for cleaning. Having the ability to 3D print our own metal components has really improved our development process. The similarities between what we'll print in stainless steel and what we would cast in stainless steel, it's just incredible. That's something we can get in two days in our own lab. The hardware we manufacture is what holds the window together structurally. And if that were to fail, it can mean a severe damage to a building and major disruption for someone's life. The strength of the 3D printed parts that we get off the Mark Forge machines allow us to put those parts through the same set of conditions that we would test a production piece. They're real parts that have actual strength. In this highly competitive world, you need every advantage you can get to produce the parts, do your job, have a leg up on your competition in every single part of the business possible. And 3D printing is huge to help us do that. Okay, great. Now let's talk about the Mark Forge platform. What I want you to learn here is what makes Mark Forge different and how the technology actually works. Our customers are choosing Mark Forge for these reasons. Our comprehensive portfolio. With Mark Forge, you can print a full range of materials spanning from plastics to composites all the way to metals. Next is a strength and accuracy. Our products deliver accurate parts reliably, made from strong industrial materials. Continuous innovation delivered through the software means that the MarkForge platform continues to improve over time. 
Accessible, easy to use technology. Put simply, our platform just works. Our printers are reliable, easy to use and maintain, and the processes are safe. With the introduction of the Metal X, our customers no longer need to dedicate huge resources, training, and expertise to leverage 3D metal printing. And then an innovation leader in the marketplace. Mark IV's brought continuous carbon fiber printing, safe and affordable metal printing, and a growing portfolio of industrial materials to the market. MarkForge continues to offer a platform running on industry-leading software. One perfect example is Blacksmith. Blacksmith leverages artificial intelligence to increase accuracy through machine learning. In other words, your machine is learning at the speed of a global fleet. So with the MarkForge products, we offer a robust industrial printing platform and control the entire ecosystem from the hardware to the software, even down to the materials that we produce in-house. No, this isn't because Mark Fords are control freaks. This integrated platform ensures repeatability, reliability, and the best possible customer outcomes. So the Mark Fords hardware, uh, let's go from left to, left to right here. So we have the award-winning desktop series printers there on the left. Uh, the next one in line is our industrial series printers. These deliver a larger build volume, faster printing, uh, advanced materials, and additional hardware that delivers an even more impressive accuracy and reliability over the desktop model. Next is the Metal X, and it's going to be the Metal X system. This is an end-to-end -end solution to provide 3D metal printing in-house. This includes the printer, the wash, and the center pictured here. So Mark Forge materials, a full range of materials that stand up to industrial environments. So we offer plastics. So our plastic is a nylon six filled with a chopped carbon fiber. And then we have our composites Mark Forge has the proven technology to reinforce with a continuous strand of fiber to deliver metal strength composite parts. And then when the applications require, our portfolio of metal materials continues to grow. So let's switch gears real quick, hybrid parts. So hybrid parts leverage a full range of materials to optimize your parts performance. So what we're talking about here is use metal in the areas where you need the wear resistance, hardness, high stiffness and strength, and then focus on the composite printing technology when you need your part to be lightweight and have higher energy absorption. So composites are also a great solution when you need a very large part that can be printed very quickly. Let's switch gears and take a look at the software solution for the MarkForge printing platform, Iger. It's cloud-based, always improving the print experience, and delivers critical capabilities to support your enterprise. And, and those are a digital part repository, the slicer for your 3D printers, and then it also offers you fleet management. Iger is free with all of our printers and is also free to try. All you have to do is simply create a free account, upload your SDL part files, and see what your parts cost to print. Okay, Iger. So we're going to look at the part repository, the slice, and the fleet management aspects of these. So we have an extremely comprehensive filter and search feature inside of our library. This is going to allow you to locate your parts quickly and easily. Um, our import feature is extremely simple with just a drag and drop. And then you can tell it where to save that, whether it's in a folder or the top level. As far as configuration, you pick your down facing surface. It's obviously going to orientate. You pick your material. If it's metal, you're going to select your center option. All of our composite and metal printers all work off this same interface here. As we add parts to a build, you see the same search function. 
You add those parts, drag them around. Notice your build details updated there on the left. Next, when we go to print, we hit print now. This is going to update our, our in this case, a metal X. You see the job that runs out to that machine. This allows you to see all of our uh, parts running on all of our machines. Um, the basic library here, uh, so if we, if we analyze a, a part existing in our library, this internal x-ray view allows you to see where the fiber is located inside of, uh, inside of that particular part. Uh, you, can, you can drag your grippers there at the, across the bottom and change the uh, location of that fiber. And then in a 2D mode, you can analyze each and every layer uh, very dynamically. Quick overview of, of Iger. That was pretty awesome. Let's take a little deeper dive into the MarkForge composite technology. MarkForge is unique in that it's the only proven 3D printing technology that can print continuous carbon fiber. This can be a complicated concept, so let's chat about something everyone's familiar with, and that's rebar and concrete. So we all know why engineers utilize rebar in concrete. That's to drastically increase the strength. If we poured concrete without metal reinforcement or without rebar in reinforcement, it would simply crumble and break. Uh, it would make it very, very brittle. So to drastically increase Mark Ford's strength, Mark Ford leverages the continuous filament fabrication which uses continuous fibers placed in the chopped carbon fiber filled plastics to deliver unmatched strength. You can now replace metal parts with Mark Forge parts that are stronger than aluminum at half the weight. The question that always comes up is when to print with fiber. So you want to print with fiber when you want your parts to have a, a few different characteristics. Let's talk about those. Number one, metal strength. So, so the strength of a fiber reinforced part comes from the combined strength of the plastic and the continuous fiber strands woven throughout the part. This can make parts comparable to aluminum in strength and stiffness, yet much lighter. So the, the next benefit that we may be looking for is durability. So reinforcing fibers can vastly increase the lifetime of a part. Fibers strengthen that part far beyond traditional plastics, meaning a reinforced part can hold up much better over an extended period of time than a standard plastic part. And then the, the next benefit would be optimized for performance. Our continuous filament fabrication is a unique process in that you can selectively reinforce a part for its use case. You can tailor a part, you can tailor a part strength profile exactly for its application by adding continuous fibers where strength is needed the most. So to take advantage of the Mark Force technology, you'll design your part in CAD and import the STL file in Iger. In Iger, You'll select a few additional options to configure where the continuous fiber reinforcement is positioned and routed, and then you send the file to one of the Mark Forge printers. The printer will autonomously build the part, switching back and forth from printing plastic or continuous fiber as needed, producing a strong, ready-to-use part right off the print bed. So continuous filament fabrication, or CFF, is the Mark Forge process that lays down continuous strands of high strength composite fibers like carbon fiber, fiberglass, or Kevlar in a Mark Forge matrix material, typically onyx. This process creates parts that have a better strength to weight ratio than 60-61 aluminum. This graph actually shows the stress strain curve of the materials that we print with. We often get asked the difference between the Mark Forge technology and other industrial printers that just print with ABS. So you'll see ABS at the bottom of this graph. 
Our continuous fiber filament fabrication technology delivers unmatched strength. So as we look at the curve for carbon fiber, which is the most sought after fiber to print with for its strength and weight properties, we see it far exceeds everything else in this graph. Fiberglass next, it's the most cost effective fiber. Customers will typically use this to iterate on their designs with fiberglass to ensure design optimization before printing with the carbon fiber. Next, Kevlar. Think of a bulletproof vest. It's highly impact resistant and won't break, and it will not simply plastically deform or bend and fail over time. Lastly, we have our high strength, high temp fiberglass, otherwise known as HSHT, which has a heat deflection temperature of 150 degrees C or 302 degrees Fahrenheit. Combine this with onyx and you get a part that can withstand an applied load at an elevated temperature for pro prolonged periods of time. Just how strong is the Mark Forge continuous carbon fiber? Well, here's a chain link that was printed with continuous carbon fiber on an X7 industrial machine, and then it was put on an Instaron pull test machine, and this is used to test how strong the part is and under what load it will actually break. So let's break this part. That's pretty darn impressive. 22,000 pounds. So let's put that into perspective. 22,000 pounds is equivalent to a cement truck? Wow, that's pretty crazy. Six Ford Tauruses? 1,500 bowling balls. I get that. That's, that's pretty crazy. So continuous fiber can really create some strong parts. I think everybody here would agree with that. At times, your application will require properties that only metal materials can deliver. The Metal X 3D printing platform is safe, cost-effective, and easy to use. All which dramatically reduce lead time, reduce costs, and maximize gains across your organization. Let's look at the metal additive manufacturing technologies and uh, just talk about some highlights of the Mark Forge technology. This is, a, this is a technology that is changing the metal additive scene today. And, and, and the reasons why are, number one, it's safe. So there's no loose powder. It's much safer and less expensive on that initial investment and over time. It's easy to use. There's no specialized operator required. Um, and then there's no need for a wire EDM uh, to get the part off the print bed or any of those other expensive uh, secondary uh, machines that, that you would need with a traditional metal technology. With the Mark IV's wash and center, you can actually batch process your metal parts. So as your metal parts continually come out of your Metal X printer, um, you can continue to batch process those through the process in the wash and the center. There are a number of benefits for 3D printing with the Metal X versus alternative fabrication methods. So let's, let's take a look at those. The first being no tooling. Many forms of metal fabrication require tooling whether it's casting, bending, extruding, making metal parts also involves, you know, producing hardware that cuts or forms the metal into its final shape. And then three printing parts ultimately require no fixturing or tooling. This allows fabricators to create parts with minimal overhead, decrease part cost for low volume production. In addition, the lack of tooling cost enables business businesses to take new jobs where tooling would have previously proved cost prohibitive. Next, let's, let's talk about automation. Most manufacturing processes require continual human oversight to ensure successful outcomes. For machine components, design must be programmed in CAM before tooling touches stock. Metal 3D printers automatically produce parts from design files. So no CAM is actually necessary. Iger, Mark Ford's 3D printing software, 
produces the file for printing with minimal human input. This helps you get parts in hand faster and more affordably than traditional processes that required skilled labor. And then the obvious, geometric freedom. Complexity typically adds cost, lead time, and skilled labor, meaning intricate geometries using subtractive processes are more expensive, time consuming, and sometimes impossible to machine. With three metal printing, complexity is free. Let's talk a little bit more about how the Metal X and what makes it simple to make parts uh, with the underlying processes that are, that are actually fairly complex. So just like composites, the process starts with your 3D part design. You're going to save an STL file and bring that into uh, MarkForge's Iger software. And then the first step is to print. So you'll upload the part and hit print. Uh, because the MarkForge software accounts for shrinkage, compensation in, in the centering process, you can design your part to its nominal or pre-machined dimensions if you'll be machining any features after printing. Um, the next step after your print is the wash. So when the part has been printed, we're going to move it to the wash. This printing step is intended to remove the wax in the parts. The next step after your wash is going to be the center. So first, the polymer is burned out of the part through the pores left behind with the wax removal. Then the metal parts begin to atomically diffuse together and create connections as the heat ramps up. After centering and cooling down, those metal particles have diffused together and the part has densified to a 99.8% dense material which is going to be equivalent to a billet material. Finally, your part comes out of the furnace. Uh, this is a, your post-center part. You have a metal part now. This metal part is what we call near net shape. Uh, once the center cycle is complete, around a day's time, your part is ready for use. Now let's take a look at, at Trip, and he's going to go through the entire process uh, from start to finish. Hey everyone, I'm here to talk today about the MarkForge Metal X process. It's a simple, safe, and cost-effective method to go from design to functional metal part. There are three steps in this process, printing, washing, and then sintering. First, let's start with CAD. You design your part, then export to STL and upload it to Iger. Iger is a cloud-based slicing and print management system that comes with every MarkForge product. This automatically configures your part based on the material and printer you've selected. When your part slices for metal 3D printing, it gets scaled up to account for shrink and deformation in the downstream processes. It then slices your part into discrete layers, identifies overhang features, and builds supports and a raft underneath your part. As we go through printing, washing, and sintering, Iger will monitor the part's progress along the way. Let's start this print and go to the Metal X. Before starting a print, the machine automatically maps and levels the bed to ensure the first layer goes down well. Your print is built of two materials stored in this heated chamber above. One of ceramic release material and one of the metal to be printed. This filament material is metal powder safely suspended within a two-part plastic binder. It gets heated and extruded onto the build plate where the part is created layer by layer. The release material gets extruded as an interface between the part and its supports so that once your part comes out of the furnace, it's easy to remove. Unlike other metal 3D printing systems, this process does not require loose metal powder, resulting in a safer and more cost-efficient workflow. 17-4 stainless steel is loaded now. However, with a quick changeover, the system is capable of printing in stainless steels, tool steels, coppers, Inconel, along with several other materials currently in development. Once your part is finished printing, you'll get a notification. At this point, you can go to the printer, remove the part from the build tray, and clear the bed. Now we have what's called a green part. It doesn't really look or feel like metal. However, a large part of it is comprised of metal powder. Next step, we'll be putting it into wash one for the debind process. The wash one removes the first stage of the binding material. A green part is taken from the printer and placed into the wash basket, which is then lowered into the solvent. Wash times will vary, ranging from a few hours to a few days, depending on the thickest region of your part. After that, it's now called a brown part and is ready for sintering. Let's go over to the furnaces. This is Sinter 2, a furnace designed for mid-volume production runs and larger printed parts. Sintering transforms a print from a lightly bound collection of metal powder to a fully finished metal part. 
First, the temperature ramps slowly to burn away the trace amounts of remaining binding material. Then, temperature ramps closer to the melting point of the material, allowing metal particles to start to fuse together to create a strong metal part. Mark Forge sintering furnaces use a carbon-free retort to ensure part quality and alloy composition standards are met for our finished pieces. Each run takes about a day and can be monitored remotely using the Iger software. Once a run is complete, the setter tray full of finished metal pieces can be removed from the furnace. Once removed from the raft, these parts are ready for use. In the furnace, the layer of printed release material between supports and the raft and your printed part remains powderized. This allows the structure to be tacked to the raft to better control shrink and accuracy throughout the process, but also an easy release after sintering. At this stage, your part is fully sintered and ready to be used. It can be post-machined, polished, or otherwise processed as necessary for the final application. But in many uses, the accuracy and strength are good enough as is. It's ready for install. Check out markforge.com for more information about our simple, safe, and cost-effective method of metal additive manufacturing. That's pretty informative. I hope everybody now kind of catches the drift of how the process works. Uh, I really like how, how Trip went through that. So let's talk about the uh, availability of materials today. So Mark Forge is offering five engineering grade materials that you can print with right now. Uh, the first is 17.4 pH stainless steel. The next is going to be an H13 tool steel, A2 tool steel, D2 tool steel, Inconel 625, and then pure copper. All of these materials are here to help you uh, manufacture complex parts affordably. In addition to those materials that are already available, we have a couple other materials in development. Number one is the most sought after material, that, that titanium 6A. Um, it's also known as grade five or TC4 titanium. It's ideal for lightweight applications requiring high tensile strength and corrosion resistance. It's widely used in aerospace applications such as uh, airframe components and jet engines, just to mention a couple. The next material is one that lots of customers are excited about. We've got 316L in development, and this is the marine grade stainless steel. It exhibits fantastic uh, corrosion resistance and its excellent weldability make it a, a, um, a very sought after material. If you want to learn more about the technology, if you want to do a deeper dive, um, you know, on the design for additive or more specifically the design for reinforced additive or even the metal additive, uh, send us an email. Uh, anybody on this, on this call today would be happy to help you out from MLC and um, we could provide any, any documentation that uh, you would like to review. Now we're gonna switch gears a little bit and talk about, the, obviously we're all here for the future of an additive, um, ultimately is today, right? But we're, we're gonna dive into some real customers that are seeing real value today. So we, always, we already saw a little snippet of Caldwell. Um, they cut their new product development time from six months to six weeks. That's pretty crazy. Um, so a little background about Caldwell. Caldwell is a family owned operation that's been in business for over 130 years. They designed their own hardware for 100,000 SKUs. 3D printing is, is the first tool that they go to in their toolbox. Uh, using printers for prototyping, fixturing, sales demos and end use parts. Their business benefits are actually undeniable. They're developing products faster and at a much lower cost than before. Yet the benefits go beyond cost savings and faster product development cycles. You know, from the CEO down to the engineers and model makers, 3D printing has made a profound change across the organization. The, the, you know, the CEO saying it's part of our culture now, uh, you know, the director of engineering making the statement of my engineers immediately think, hey, let's 3D print this part and see if it works. Down to the model maker who said, I thought it was going to be hard and make my job harder. 
now I can create things that I couldn't before. So those are all pretty profound statements you know, that run the gamut through the organization. Lean Machine is a Canadian-based CNC fabrication shop. They own a composite printer and work alongside fellow MarkForge customers at Polytechnic Institute to utilize their Metal X printer. Tooling costs and manual processes weigh down their ability to take on new jobs. So with this automated sheet metal bending cell that you see here in this picture, they can go from signed PO to fabricating parts in four days instead of four weeks. The press, this press brake tool and die were previously machined out of heavy steel, but the 3D printed parts bent the aluminum wire clips with a better quality and finish due to the non-marring surface of the composite material. One of their other applications they saw a great fit for 3D printing was end-of-arm tooling. They printed 17-4 stainless steel grippers to be used by one of their robotic arms in the same sheet metal bending cell. Now, Lean Machine is utilizing their CNC's five times less than before and think creatively about how to best design for additive manufacturing. Here's a quick video about Lean Machine CNC and how they have changed the way that they work. One of the big challenges we had with the bending cell was to basically design and integrate everything in a really timely fashion. We were able to actually do it in about six months and that would not have been possible without the additive. We found MarkForge by researching for the best printers out there for commercial and industrial quality printing. One of the parts we make at Lean Machine is a, a aluminum wire clip like this. The tooling in general, what we used to use, was a uh, big heavy steel tooling like this to put in our press brake. So one thing we found we could do with, with printing was actually print these tools instead. The big thing that we saw with MarkForge was it took a big step from a hobby printer to something that you can actually make parts out of. And we saw a few sample parts and then we kind of jumped in with it and haven't looked back. So the first step is that you load the blanks into the trays, which hold 200 parts each. After that, the robot picks the parts out of that tray using an array system and then takes it into the press brake to bend them one at a time. Because of the 3D printing, you have complete control over the profile of your bend. The Onyx is actually very good for friction and it doesn't leave any marring on the part at all. So we have a much nicer part with the printed tooling and it's easier and cheaper to make the tool, so it's kind of a win-win. With the continuous fiber, we make a printed part that not only could compete with aluminum parts, but in many cases actually be a better part. So one of the biggest real gains that we found with the 3D printer is that if we want to get parts made, we don't have to go and schedule them out in the machine shop. We don't have to order tools. We don't have to make drawings. We can skip all of that and we can just get the parts made on the printer. We come in the next day, the parts are ready. We can start testing with them and we don't have to go and check that they're right. And being able to have every single feature on a printed part coming out within two or three thou with Z accuracies of less than a thou, I mean, the accuracy stuff is huge. As soon as we heard about metal printing, it, it's the next level, so we started looking into it. We're excited about it because, I mean, if we can make some tools work really well out of plastic, it kind of blows your mind what we could probably do out of steel. For the grippers, they'll just look really awesome on there. The metal printed parts look nicer than most machine parts. We just keep bending thousands of parts and the tools are not wearing. They're just bending perfect parts. It's like, okay, these guys can pretty much do anything. Next, let's talk about Shukla Medical, who is a subsidiary of an aerospace manufacturer SS White Technologies based in Florida. The team creates orthopedic extraction tools for implants, such as knee and hip implants. They used to create prototypes using their CNC machines, which cost almost just as much to make the prototype as it did the end part. Shukla works closely with surgeons to check for form and fit of their designs using metal printed prototypes. Since every minute in the operating room counts, the final tool needs to be as perfect as possible. Shukla Medical brought down its development cycle by bringing 3D printing in-house. Their design process is dramatically faster than before 
and allows surgeons to make reliable orthopedic extractions. 3D printing is an enabling technology to innovate faster. So this team brought on a Mark II and a Metal X printer to speed up its design process and get feedback from surgeons faster. They made the initial prototypes in carbon fiber reinforced onyx, and then they prototyped the next iteration in 17.4 stainless to make a one-to-one -one prototype of the final tool. In just one year, Shukla was, was able to achieve ROI on their investment and have saved approximately $10,000 per month since the purchase of the Metal X. More importantly, their turnaround time to get parts in the hands of surgeons went down dramatically. Next, let's talk about Nika Systems, who is a Canadian customer that manufactures mining and cement lab equipment. They design crucible clips that hold the samples, which need to be able to reach extreme temperatures and then cool down quickly to produce the final sample. They previously outsourced the printing of Inconel 625 crucible clips. As a material can withstand temperatures up to 1000 degrees C and cool right down without deforming. However, the high cost was getting to be too much for them. So they decided to bring the capability in-house using metal 3D printing. With the Metal X, Nika Systems prints a one-to-one -one replacement. On the left is the Mark Forge 3D printed part and on the right is the outsourced part made with DMLS technology. Insourcing also benefits businesses in a couple of new ways. Having the machine in-house allows them to rapidly design, test, and print new parts. It's a prototyping machine as well as a machine that makes in-use parts. This results in better, more optimized designs. Once they brought their Metal X in-house, they reduced their lead time from weeks to days. This meant less stress for them. Within a year of having the Metal X in-house, the company saved 80,000 US dollars in part costs alone. Nika was able then to get their products to customers at a faster, more affordable rate. Wurzala services a third of the world's largest cargo ships and oversees the manufacturing of large, uh, in my words, gargantuan engines. They are a Finnish company with Italian factories that often need to fabricate tools to solve problems and optimize the efficiency of both the field and factories, and usually have to rely on third-party suppliers to manufacture those. Wurzala used their MarkForged X7 printer to increase efficiency and make quick design changes. Wurzala already was familiar with the MarkForged carbon fiber 3D printing, but needed more throughput and capacity, which is why they expanded their 3D printing capabilities by purchasing an X7. One of Wurzala's use cases for 3D printing is this lifting tool, which is used to move heavy components like engines. They needed to transform a heavy, hard to transport tool into a lightweight part to allow the team to increase efficiency. Switching gears again, this is uh, probably one of my favorite applications for the Metal X. Uh, I've actually seen these parts uh, firsthand and they're extremely impressive. Goering UK is the Birmingham subsidiary of the Goering Group. They are a manufacturer of precision cutting tools for people like BMW, Jaguar, Land Rover, and even Airbus. They are very well known in the, in the cutting tool industry. Uh, Goering was, was, in, was searching for new business opportunities to serve their smaller customer base in the specialty tool space. Uh, by adopting metal 3D printing, they were actually able to open up new revenue streams for these high value customers. The general process for tools to be created, including the designs, needed to be approved by the customer before they go ahead and start making the final tool. A process like this can take up to eight weeks. However, smaller customers have limited time to wait for a new special tool is they are unlikely to have spare special tools sitting around. 
So to open up the, these revenue streams for the smaller companies who couldn't afford to wait that long, the team started to look at 3D printing. The next one we're going to look at is Siemens Gas and Power. They build compressors, turbines, and generators that are used across the globe. The Flora division is responsible for creating new designs for engineers in the field to solve problems. Siemens started its own Mark Forge print farm with several industrial printers like the X7, uh, giving them the ability to help field engineers faster than before. One example is a cutback tool, which is used to maintenance turbine systems. The traditional cutback tool did not work on contoured turbines due to the flat guiding plate. When the part was needed, the team would purchase a cutback tool, send it off to the Philippines to be disassembled and reassembled with a curved guiding plate. This honestly just wasn't scalable. They wanted an in-house solution. So the team 3D printed a circular saw inspired cutback tool using their X7 print farm in addition to design considerations, Siemens wanted to ensure the tool could easily be transported to engineers in the field, which meant that using continuous carbon fiber was a perfect solution for its strength to weight ratio. 3D printing enables easy iterations. Siemens requested initial feedback from field engineers and redesigned the tool with the suggestions in mind. Pictured above here is the updated version, which is easier to handle and it's more ergonomic. Just one of these tools saved the company approximately $8,000, and there are several of them in the field today. 3D printing with the Mark Forge printers has not only saved Siemens time and money, but bolstered Siemens' design for additive manufacturing approach and allows them to be looking first at their 3D printed parts over traditionally fabricated components when it's possible. Awesome. Thanks so much, Kyle. That was a great presentation. Uh, we really appreciate you taking the majority of this presentation and running with it. You had uh, made a number of points there in the presentation that I know that a majority of the individuals listening in found very beneficial. One of the points that I like to that I like to bring up in conversation, and one of my key takeaways, is the hybrid parts being able to utilize the composite and the metal 3D printing with our technology. I think that that's a huge benefit to working with Mark Forge. What about you, Jordan? What was one of your key takeaways? Gosh, there was so much in there. But uh, for me, don't take our word for everything that we've talked about today. Listen to what the customers have to say. I thought the Caldwell Manufacturing, the manufacturer of door and window hardware did an amazing job of showing all the custom tooling and the functional prototyping that they're doing. They utilize both a composite machine and a metal, making hybrid parts, but uh, they're also utilizing the composite enough on its own and the metal on itself and, uh, on, by itself alone to, to justify the purchase of the machines. Very cool. So, uh, Amelia, don't we have another webinar coming up at the end of the month? Do you want to just give a quick snid bit about that upcoming webinar for everyone listening in still? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we have another webinar coming up at the end of this month, April 28th. It's going to be additive manufacturing post COVID-19. So we're going to take a look at the past, present and future, specifically the future of additive manufacturing with an emphasis on the effects of COVID-19. So we're going to have some uh, special guests. We're going to interview those individuals. We're going to take a closer look at what they're doing and how MLC CAD Systems and Mark Forge is helping them through these tough times. So um, I know that you can register through our website and, um, you know, I think that that's definitely a great step. I know a lot of people do have an extra, you know, they're working from home. They've got a little bit of extra time on their hands. They might be able to sit in on that webinar, too. So feel free to register through our website. Awesome. So go to the website, register. You can go to the events tab and then the drop down, select Mark Forge, and you'll see that event there. Uh, but to make it easier to you, we, do, we are going to launch a poll here in just a moment as we move into the uh, questions and answers. Uh, one of those options is to just have us register you, and we can do that for you uh, at the end of today. Amelia, do you want to go through the next steps for everyone now that we've sat through this awesome webinar? 
Absolutely. If you're if you're still with us, um, we want you to take the next steps and choose from one of the following. We've got uh, you can request request a quote. Excuse me. You can be contacted by a 3D printer specialist like myself or Jordan, or you can evaluate a part with an application expert. And then thirdly, or I mean fourthly, excuse me, you can register for the event. So um, feel free to raise your hand or uh, you know type in the comment box below any questions or which option you would prefer. Awesome. So yeah, we'd love to keep the conversation going. We'll launch that poll uh, right now as we move into questions and answers with Kyle Norman and Travis Bates. Uh, again, my name is Jordan Swan. I just want to thank everyone for tuning in today and uh, let's get those questions answered. Absolutely. Thanks everyone for joining us.